G'day folks, oh, welcome to another little Ramblotronic random Friday afternoon. Um, only just got in from work about an hour ago, did a full day today, and uh, it was all good. Had a big clean up out the back of my, well, my own little work area down the back. Not very many people work down there, but yeah, I figured it was time for a big tidy up. And sure enough, uh, my good friend PK, Pete, threw out, or decided to get rid of his old, uh, MIG welder, he gave this to me as a gift, I think he bought it when he was about 21 and uh, I can't remember how old he is now but this thing's probably about as old as I am so it makes about sen makes sense, uh, I think his kids are about as old as I am so yeah, <laughs> it's probably this thing's probably older than I am, it's an ACNDC um, mini spool fed MIG welder so it's really cool, uh, the speed controller in it died, like it was just running flat out so I'm going to rebuild this myself. I'll probably just get a new pot and a new uh, uh, semiconductor. I think it's like a FET or something. It's a TIP35C. I'll be able to look that straight up and find it. It's my ST semiconductor. And it's got a 1K potentiometer on it. Which has been desoldered once before. But I don't know if that's the actual problem. So that's all that's wrong with it. It's got a new tip and everything on it. It just needs a uh, good clean up and a run. So... That's a nice little donation, a decent size MIG. I've had mini MIGs before, about half this size, but they're just gutless and well, very dilapidated, whereas this one's in fairly reasonable nick. It's a um, yeah, MIG Mate 150DP by SIP. He said there weren't many available at the time, and this was one of the better ones when he bought it, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, he had a good day at work anyway. Some good changes going through metal shop and if, making things more efficient, um, teaching people things. My good friend Terry, who owns this amplifier, is now taking over teaching and monitoring things in work metal shop, which is about two or three years too late, but uh, it's better late than never. We've got to pick, the, pick up the pace and improve on the smartness of things because without a supervisor, your metal shop's only as good as the people working there, and if they're struggling to get some of the jobs done and just no one's around to teach them. I mean, I'm around to teach them, but the problem is because no one's appointed, they don't don't really listen or remember. So I've got some big changes coming up at work. I mean, the only reason I don't take a supervisor job is because I'd have to work five days a week flat out, so I'm not going to do that. I mean, it would be extra money, but I don't want a supervisor job. There's just too much responsibility and other crap associated with it. So, yeah, Terry can do that. <laughs> No paperwork though, no having to learn how to use Pronto or manage stock or anything like that. That's my old uh, supervisor's job, to manage stock and things like that, which is always good. Very good at stock management, but just got to smarten up the workshop. So I'll be playing a, a role in that as well. Um, yeah, soldering station's working out pretty well too. Uh, hot air gun works well, voltage, everything like that. I've just been, uh, I've recapped this amplifier. This is Terry's Luxman. L430. Um, for those who don't know, Terry's the guy I got the uh, Ford EB Fairmont off, and he's a very good friend of mine from work. I've done quite a lot of stuff for him. He bought all the old uh, UPS batteries from the giant 40 kVA UPS. So as you can see, I put some nice big Rubicon grain silos in there. Um, the other caps all tested up fine. I've replaced a couple which didn't, or was, were bulging, or just cooked, but. These old Rubicons are tough as nails, like they're all really good. I spent a couple of hours re-soldering and trying to clean the board. I mean, there's so much flux on this thing, it made a bit of a mess, but at least I got all the dry joints and things on them. There were quite a few dry joints, particularly on all the slide switches and things, so that's all done. It was just tedious sit down and do it work, not video work. But you know what it's like, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of you know what it's like, chasing uh, bad solder joints and things. But originally this was canned because the um, main DC caps were uh, failing. So anyway, what I was doing is uh, testing it out. And there was no output at all. Like, nothing happened. It just stayed in warm-up mode. And it just didn't do anything. So I had a bit of a muck around, look online, and there's a relay to turn the speakers on once it's gone through its normal volt voltage stabilisation process. And this thing is just stone cold dead. I don't know why, it's just, it doesn't work. I put power to it, it doesn't do anything, so I'm gonna have to replace that one. It's just a 24 volt two pole relay, essentially. 
single direction just obviously closes center pins to the outer pins nothing too special so I'll find a suitable replacement for it and away we go uh, yeah Luxman make superb amplifiers yeah, duo beta circuit uh, four channel um, 105 watts I think it is 105 watts per channel Terry said it would blow the crap out of my speakers and I believe him it's got nice big uh, fets on it C3182 are the black ones and A1265 are the green ones and there's some smaller ones in there too but yeah they're a decent amplifier if you can find anything Luxman buy it they're really good so yeah that's sort of what we're at at the moment we had a big throw out at work loads of motors I grabbed one more motor even though I don't need it that motor's only two years old and it went in the drink so it's, uh, it can be rebearinged and reused but there's another half dozen under the workbench and probably 12 or so in the uh, electric motor scrap bin likewise a few of these floating around there's a couple of rotted out Crompton Greaves foot switches they make a nice dead man switch for a, a drilling press or something but these things well yeah what do you do so many motors so few uses for them it's a shame to throw them out but yeah when they're dead they're dead and that one's seized so that's where we're at at the moment haven't done much on the generator I need a nice cool wet day probably Sunday when it's raining I'm gonna wrap the big muffler assembly up in uh, in probably sheet metal and fiberglass wool and just burn the crap out of it with the big blowtorch try and cook all the carbon out of it before it goes back on so that's sort of what that's waiting for anyway not much else going on I did score some nice CB antennas as well uh, I think Alltronics or someone sent them to the wrong well they sent a double shipment they sent us seven of these and basically said that shipping was going to cost as much as they're worth so don't bother sending them back yay so uh, yeah our director of marketing took three of them for his uh, cars and rally friends and uh, gave another four to me so I've given away all but two of them I'll probably keep one for myself and maybe give another one to Terry or someone they're just standard little CB radio antenna really magnetic base for low speed probably four-wheel driving or something like that put it on a boat oh well enough rambling more working I've got to try and find a 24 volt relay which shouldn't be hard around here I'll check all my old uh, boards and things from uh, plasma TVs or something. I've got tons of 12 volt relays that'd be perfect. You just clip these two pins off here and just solder them in. But they're all 12 volt and this one's 24. So let's see what I can do. And there is voltage getting to those pads. If I turned it on right now and meet it across there, I'm getting 24 volts. This is just doing nothing, which is a bit odd considering it was canned simply because of the caps, but then who knows, maybe the relay was oscillating because of the um, AC frequency going through. Oh well. Enough talking, more working.